My hair is too long, I should get a haircut, but I don't have time or money. Hi, I'm John, this is my vlog, and today we're going to do a Try Stuff video. It's been a billion years, we're gonna do it. But the thing is, this isn't actually a thing that I'm gonna try. Part of my plan for this channel when I first made it was to do some videos about things that I'm into, advice on how to get started into doing those things. So this is going to be the first one of those, and it is about board games. If you know me, you know I love board games, and I always have since I was playing the mass market, Clue, Monopoly, that kind of stuff. But a lot of people played those games, were kind of dissatisfied, so they think they don't like board games. But the thing is, they're probably just playing the wrong games. As I got older, I discovered this whole wide world of other board games which are so fun and strategic and invite a lot of social interactions between you and other players, and that's what really makes board games fun and playable and awesome. So if you fell away from board games, you should give them another try. But how do you get started? If you go look, the market is huge. What games do you start with? What do you do? Ah, so this is what this video is for, some tips on getting into board games. The number one best way to get involved with board games is to find a friend you know that plays them and owns them and wants to play with you. If you have a friend who plays and owns board games, I'm sure they will want to play with you for sure. So just get with them and play a game. The reason this is awesome is first of all, you know them and they're gonna wanna help you learn. And second of all, they're gonna know what you're into personally and know the games that they own and will be able to suggest good games for you to start with. Another good option if you don't have any friends that play board games is to find your local board game store and see if they host a game night. Most stores do and most of the time they're free and you can come, tell them you're new to gaming, try out a game with some people, meet some other people who like to play games, and you can learn about a bunch of different games and the people in the store are probably very knowledgeable and can suggest different things to you based on what you're interested in and your level of experience. But let's say you don't have friends that play board games and you're either too shy or unable to get to a board game store to go to a game night. Here are some tips if you're gonna start on your own. Tip number one is less a tip but an observation. Board games are kind of expensive. Board games like Monopoly and Clue are produced on the mass market, but most games produced for a strategy board game audience are produced in smaller printings with really higher quality components, and therefore they're more expensive. Games cost money. It's a fact. That's an advantage to board games to our friends. It keeps the cost at free. But if that's not an option, some other ways to keep the cost down is to start with card games, because those tend to be cheaper, or wait for sales on a place like Amazon.com, although I do suggest supporting your board game stores where possible. So the two things you need to play a board game are people and the game. When you're choosing people to play with, find friends of yours that are willing to play a game with you. Don't try to force your friends into trying this with you if they're not interested. If the people you're playing with are dragging their feet through any given game, you're not going to enjoy the experience. Once you have at least one other person who wants to play, you're ready to find the game. Here's some things to look for when choosing your first board game to get started with. First of all, pay a lot of attention to the number of players, and not just the number that it's possible to play with, but go on BoardGameGeek.com, which we'll come back around to, and see what the game is recommended to be played with. Some games you can play with two, but they're really not that great with two. Or you can play them with six, but they take forever. The next thing to look at is the playtime of the game. There's a lot of really awesome, awesome games that run for two to four hours. That's probably not what you want to start with. I would suggest a game that has a runtime of an hour at most, maybe 90 minutes. Once you and your friends get into gaming, you'll love to play those two hour mechas. But to start with, let's go a little lighter. The next thing you want to look for are games that have simple rules. Sometimes you buy games and they have 30 page rule books and they're super fun to get into and really dynamic and interesting, but if you're new to playing board games, you probably want to start with a game that has a more streamlined rule system. This is going to keep everyone from getting confused and get them started quicker in playing the game. Kind of piggybacked off of it, the longer the rules typically the more components there are and typically longer setup takes. You probably want to avoid all that and go with a game with simple rules. The thing is, many games have simple rules, but require a complicated strategy, and that's what makes them fun. The last thing you're going to look for is just a game that has a theme that you like. Are you interested in space travel? Are you interested in court politics? Are you interested in trains? Find a theme that you're interested in and try a game for that. Getting into the theming of the game is a lot of what makes strategy board games fun. Some suggestions of games that fit all these categories, The Settlers of Catan is world famous for a reason. It's very easy to pick up, very easy to get into, and you're going to enjoy playing it. Plus, the way the game's economy is built, it includes a lot of that social interaction element. Forbidden Island by Playwright Games is a cooperative game that's very easy to pick up and has really cool art and theming, but it still has a pretty low price. Cooperative games sometimes can be very complex. Forbidden Island is very streamlined. You may not win your first game, but you will at least understand why you lost. 
And cooperative gaming is super fun for a group with varying experience levels or a group that is inexperienced because you're all in it together. Just don't let someone boss you around. Another great card game that's on Amazon for like 10 bucks is Love Letter. Love Letter is a cool game where you're trying to get your love letters to a princess. It's played with a small deck of 16 cards and a simple draw one, play one mechanic. But the social interactions that surround the game and trying to figure out the different people you're playing with are part of what makes the game so great. And finally, a little pricier than the other ones, Ticket to Ride by Days of Wonder is a great, easy to pick up, but highly thematic and highly strategic game. The market is so big, it's really easy to get lost. Two great resources for looking at games are your friendly local game store, where we'll be happy to suggest and recommend games for you, and we'll be able to tell you, probably from their own experience, what playing them is like. Or the previously mentioned BoardGameGeek.com. They have pages for every game out there that have reviews, sometimes have the rule booklet, photos. You can really get a sense of the game and how popular it is and how much people like it and how it plays. So if you've walked away from board games or think they're not for you or have always wanted to try but not sure how, I hope this video either encouraged you to get into it or showed you some good ways how. If you have any more questions about getting into board games or some good board games to play, you can ask me in the comments below. Plus, suggest your favorites if you are a board gamer for people who don't play. I hope you enjoyed this trying stuff video. It's a lot easier for me to do these ones where I don't actually have to try anything. If you're interested in seeing a Let's Play-esque thing of one of the board games I described, you can let me know in the comments as well, or check out many channels that do just that on the YouTubes, like Will Wheaton's Tabletop. Subscribe if you want, like it if you want, you're all great people. Good job being you. Except for you. You know what you did. Okay, bye!